Welcome everyone to today's webinar, Back to Itinerary Builder Basics. My name is Kate and I work for Wetu as an onboarding specialist. So my role within the company is to make sure that all of our operators are trained when they first join and then also to provide continued education to our operators. So if I just go over uh, what you will learn today, basically as we go in through the itinerary builder, we're going to learn the six different steps of the builder. Our first step, the itinerary details. The second step, the accommodation. The route builder, the planner, the review step, and then the additional details. So today we are going through the basic step-by-step -step process of creating an itinerary with hotels and daily activities not focusing in on any advanced itinerary stuff, just doing the basics. So to get into my builder, you'll all know is our blue itinerary builder button. And today I'm going to create a personal itinerary. So in my step one of my itinerary, the first section that we have is our itinerary name. And this is the only compulsory section of the itinerary. All of the other sections on this screen are optional and if you don't want to put the details in, you're not required to. What will happen is if you don't, for example, put a price in, that section will drop from the itinerary and you'll just miss over it for the output. For our client's name, we have got a section to put in the group name or you can put in your lead traveler's name. It's just a reference and it will say who the itinerary is presented for. Below that we have our reference number. And this reference number is from your internal booking system. And it would be the number that you use to reference your itinerary. If you don't have a reference number, you can also leave it blank. But what will also happen is when you download documentation from the itinerary builder, that name will be the name of the document. If you don't have a reference number, the name of the document will be the itinerary name. So you can select your theme. You can select your branding. Your account has those options. And then you are able to select the language of your itinerary. So this will vary depending on which languages you have enabled on your account. And those you can check in admin. Under our client email address, you can put in an email address for your client and this is used on step six when you can email the client directly out of where to system. So if I move over into the middle of the screen, I have my first section, which is my pricing section. So this is a free text field and we are able to put in however you would like your information to display. So we can also bold, italic and underline and you can edit the format in that way. For our pricing includes, what we'll do is we'll just list the included parts of the itinerary. This will be the overall includes and what you would like to specify to the client. You can also put includes on a day-by-day -day basis. Then on our excludes, this will be the overall excludes again, and this you can fill in for your client. We then have our terms and conditions, and these are terms that are specific for this itinerary. So if you are maybe putting your itinerary in a brochure or a newsletter or something along those lines, you could put in that the offer is valid for May only or any other terms and conditions that you would like to display for this client. Then we've got our special interests and our special interests are any words that you would like to highlight to your client. So this could be something about the trip or it could be used in the same sense as a hashtag. So we could do Makoro, nature. So all I'm doing is typing and pressing enter to get that in there. So what will happen is on the output of your itinerary, this will display on the overview page. At the bottom of my screen, what I have is my number of travelers and I have plus and minus signs where I can choose the number of travelers. 
If I click on enter names, I'm able to put the names of the client in there as well. And next to that, I've got my room configuration. And in my room configuration, I can choose my default configuration for this itinerary. So this will be the one that will come up automatically in the, in the different accommodations. And then if you change it for each accommodation, it will then vary. So if I go over then to my accommodation step, I can either click on the number two or I can click on next step on the bottom right hand side. And I've got four different options. So the first option that I have is accommodation and this includes all of my hotels. And my second option is add a component. And this helps you speed up the itinerary building process. A component is a little mini itinerary or package that you can add into your itinerary. So those components you can build in your builder section under the components. The third option we have is our overnight travel and that is used for traveling overnight. So anywhere where you depart on one day and land or arrive on the next day. The last one we have is our own arrangements and this has the same hotels as the hotel, the accommodation one but it will specify that the client is booking it on their own, it says own arrangements. In this option, you can also add destinations in case we don't know where your client is staying. So if you just know that they're gonna be in Cape Town, you can load Cape Town. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna load some accommodations. I'll start by clicking on accommodation. We'll go to Johannesburg for one night. If I click on rooming details, I can click on my rooms and save that and then I can check my basis and change my number of nights. My next accommodation, we'll choose the Royal Livingston Hotel, select that one. If I look at my room details, again, I can drop down, choose my room and add that to there. So what we can also do this one we can include increase our number of nights and then we have also got the option to choose the destination then my last accommodation that i'm going to add cherry be game lodge and i can increase those nights again and then for the day grouping i'll drop down and for this one i'm going to choose by destination so what the by destination does is in the planner stage it will group these three nights together and allow you to only add activities once for all of those nights rather than having blank days so if i scroll up to the top what i have is my date section so i'm just going to choose the first of november and that will be checking out on the 8th so that is the accommodation step where we've added in our accommodations. At the bottom, you can see zero more nights required. Seven of seven nights are booked. And that means when it is green, we can move on to our next step. So when we are building our route, it's important to remember to put as many points in as possible to add all of the start and end points. So what we do is we can search for our points. So if we're starting off at the residence, I don't know how they are getting there. So we can just leave that start point as blank and it will ignore that transfer and begin at the residence hotel. So if I look over here and I'm getting from Johannesburg to Livingston, I obviously need to add in a little bit more transfers because we're not able to self-drive that. So with my little plus symbol on the side, I can add in legs that allows me to build up a correct route. So if you watch the map on the side, you'll also see that this changes as we go. So I drop down, I'll choose my mode of transport and I'm going to add in a transfer to Johannesburg airport and then they will be flying to Livingston. So there we have to change that to a scheduled flight. And then from that airport, we'll change that to a transfer. 
so when we look at our different transfers, we can click on the icon and we are able to change the icon and fill in all of the details that we need and save those details. The same with our scheduled flights. You can put in all of your details and save that. So this one, use that icon and then I scroll down over here. So then from Livingston, what we'll do is we'll do a transfer to Choby Game Lodge. And then from Choby Game Lodge, we'll transfer to Kasani Airport. And then do a flight to Johannesburg Airport. And make that one a transfer. So with my flight, I'm clicking on my flight here. And then what I have the option to do is make use of this get flight details. So this is what we call the flight lookup functionality. And what it is, is if you have the details of your flight, you can search for it. So you can search with the AZ or you can just type in and then the flight number, pop that one in. So if I click on my get flight details, it says it has found a flight and it has filled in my times, my terminals and my duration of my flight. So that is an easier way to build through your itineraries. So what I'm going to do is just drop this down and make this a self drive. And when we have a self drive and you zoom in, you'll see you have a blue line. At the bottom of the list on the left, I have now got a directions button. If I click on my directions button, this will be a list of all of my self drive routes. Where I have got self drives, I can click on my pencil and I will have the directions for on the right hand side of the screen. These are directions that we pull from Google. So we do recommend that you just check them. But then what you can also do is you can hover over the blue line on the map, click and drag that route to a route that you would prefer your clients to take. So I'm now doubling back on myself a little bit. But what you can do is we can zoom in to try and make sure that we do the correct route. So there we go, we fixed my route and the directions would have uploaded on the side. So if I do update these directions, the point between A and B, what it's going to do is it's going to ask if I want to save those directions for future use. And if I click on yes, I can save it and save now. So what will also happen, let's see if it's available now, next time I have between this exact hotel and the airport, if I click at the full directions at the top, you'll see I'll have a list of the directions available that I could choose. Then we have got add car hire and here we can fill in car hire details if you have hired a vehicle for this trip. So that is the basics of the route builder. And what we can do is we can go on to our next step, which is our planner step. So in the planner, this is where we load all of the information about our trip. So what we have is our first day in Johannesburg and we can put in our day notes over here. So we can put in a day itinerary message about our time in Johannesburg. And then what we can also put in is some expert tips, includes and excludes, if you want to specify that per day. So I'm going to jump onto day two. And day two is when they are arriving in Livingston. So we can again put in some more day information and under expert tips. We can say, so anything that your clients might not be aware of that you wanted to inform them or just make sure that they are aware to that situation. So what we can also do is when we have got product activity button over here, this means that the product is an eye brochure and has got activities loaded onto the system. So if I drop down, 
I'll see various different activities and I can add them into my itinerary. So I've added in the dining room and what I'll do is I'll drop that down and choose that for dinner for that client. It might not be a planned dinner, so if it's not been booked and planned and everything, we can drop down and say it is for information purposes so that they know that there is a dining room at the hotel. So if I go on to day three, again, we can drop down and choose various different activities. And with those activities, we can again put in our time slots. If I do want to put in an exact time, I can click on the clock and I'll be able to type in my time for the client. So Zambezi rafting, if I've maybe booked that at two o'clock in the afternoon, and then the Boma dinner, you can say for dinner. If any of these are optional, we can drop down not all clients might want to go rafting, so you can make that an optional activity. So if I move over, this is where we can put in more information, but there is another little bit of function that we have. So what we can also do is if we have an activity that is not necessarily loaded within the system, we can free type the activity and then that will come out as the activity name if I type in risk it all at the end of the falls. So for anyone who knows Victoria Falls, if I save that as free text, I can add in my location and that will be at Devil's Pool. So for those that might not necessarily know Devil's Pool, it's a little swimming pool at the edge of the falls. So that's why it's risk it all, because I don't know if I would have the guts to do that. So then as you can see, if I move over to Chobe Riverfront, this is where I used the day, the by destination on the accommodation step. So for Victoria Falls, I was able to add in activities for each day, but Chobe Riverfront, I can only add one set of information. So I can drop down again, and there are various different options for that property for Chobi and I can fill those in and I can say if they are planned or optional. So maybe we can say that one is optional and that one is recommended. So we can put in day itinerary notes as well as expert tips and this again will pull through. So we can put in our includes over there. So where we have got all of this information loaded, we can drop over to the final day of our itinerary. By default, the final day of the itinerary will say end of itinerary. So this we can also customize and we can choose to say depart for home or final leg of your itinerary or your last day. So I'm going to choose depart for home because it doesn't sound as scary. So that is the basics of the planner. There are more functionalities obviously within the planner, but this is just the basic overview for you to see. So if I head over to my review stage, in my review stage, I'm able to see all of the information I've put in. So I can see for the first two properties, I chose a room type, but for the third one, I did not. So if I have confirmed this booking and I now wanna add in my room information, I can click my little pencil on the right and I can either drop down to select the room or I could type in the name of the room. So I'm going to say my standard room and I'll put in my reference. So that's the reference that I get from the hotel. So we have just released some new functionality. So if anyone sees this giant orange new over here, what we are able to do is click that on and in your itinerary, your clients will only be able to see the standard room information. They will not be able to see the standard family room, the honeymoon, the family suite, or the triple room. So if you would prefer them to stay in the room or if you only are able to sell that room with that property, you can switch it on over here 
and it will only show the standard room. What we do also have on the top over here is because this property has got the, its number of rooms loaded, you can see that you are booking one of 35. So this is nothing to do with the availability of the room. This is just to see so that you don't book 50 rooms where there's actually only 10. So it just allows you to see if you are, especially for groups, if there is enough of that same room for everyone. Further down, we have got our company information. So there's my company name, my company emergency number. If I add my contact, I can type in a contact information. And if I load contacts, these are the contacts that I have loaded within my admin tab, and I can save those in my itinerary. Below that, I have my traveler details, so I did not put names in, so they're not there. And then the miscellaneous fees, and these fees are loaded in admin. And this would be if you have anything that you have included in the itinerary that you not you don't want to show the client. It's just for your own records that it has been included. And also it will fill out in our pricing sheet on step six. Okay. So if I move into the middle one, our travel details. In here we have got all of the details of the travel information between all of the various points. And then again, you can see the blue icons where everything has been loaded. Then under my daily information, I have all of my daily details, as well as I can see my notes and I can edit them over here. If I move over to step six, step six is the final leg of uh, the final yeah, leg of our itinerary um, so this is where we put the last of the details in so our introduction is just going to be a little bit about the itinerary it comes out at the top so that the clients know what they can expect so we can just put in a little bit and we'll give you an example you can put in as much information as you want or as little information as you want it is up to you what we are able to do as well is add documents. So if I add a document, I have the option to add from my computer or my admin. And if I upload from my computer, I can just choose my option and upload that. So when it is uploaded, I can click on my pencil and I can rename this however I want it for this client. So what it allows you to do is send booking forms, banking details, maybe packing lists or anything like that that you would like to send to your client. You can send it here and it will be listed on the itinerary. We do have our cover document as well and this is for our digital packages and you'll see that the, the cover document comes out as a print button on the output. So once I have come down here and created a principal itinerary let's download this one so we've got various different options over here that you can choose from you can see that i have a contemporary principal itinerary so we recently released the contemporary there's a choice between contemporary or classic and that can be changed in admin it is a site-wide decision so your entire company will have the same if you choose contemporary, your whole company will use contemporary. So just make sure that you need to, um, you have the correct permissions to change that. There we go. So this is the new contemporary layout so let me just zoom out of this so this is the new contemporary design so the green and orange and the blue these are colors i chose so those you are able to edit to your own colors so we just have them as nice bright colors so that you're able to see the difference and what you can edit so our new printable is a lot more image rich it's got all of the same information that pulls through. 
it's just that there's a lot more images um, and functions for your clients it has a much more contemporary look and then at the bottom it's got our transport so it's got our flights our transfers our emergency contact details and then our service providers as well so all of those details followed by your terms and conditions are available there for your client so what I can do now is I can upload it as a cover document and I can edit that so that it reads a little bit better for them some people like to um, save this again as um, a PDF it's up to you you can save that when in your your system on your PC and then upload the PDF version a lot of people also do just check through the principle as a second safety measure to make sure that they're happy with that so then my last function at the bottom here is my landing page gallery and this is also a fairly new function so if I click on my little icon over there what I can do is upload images from my computer onto my itinerary so the landing page is that first page that opens when you arrive on your itinerary so what I'm gonna do is just drag and drop a couple of images and instead of the destination or accommodation images these images will display so this is a function for the enterprise packages and um, it's not available on the virtual packages so if we preview that so here you'll see that it's going this is the slideshow of the images that I just uploaded and the next one and then after that there will be no further images it will just have what I uploaded so if I enter my itinerary what we can see is my introduction is at the top we then have a summary of my accommodations a key to my basis and then some images about the destinations on the right hand side I've got my reference number as well as the special interests that I put in on the first section and then my pricing includes and excludes under my destinations tab I've got a whole lot of destination information and we also have a link through to the accommodation that they will be in for that section under my accommodation just to show you this is the one unit where I chose a luxury room but I didn't use the new functionality and you can see all of the rooms are available for the clients to look through the information if I go down to Chobi where I did choose the new function that said I didn't want the client to see any other information it just says standard room and there is no drop down available had I chosen two room types there would be a drop down but it would only be the two options that my clients can see so on our daily information we have our daily breakdown so we have our itinerary at the top and that is followed by destination images and we have day two we have added in the Royal Livingston dining room so you can see the image is coming through from there I also have my expert tips so it says at the bottom just pack your sunblock and your hat so then I've got Victoria Falls with all of my activities and services and the next one where I wrote to risk it all at the end of the falls if I tick on that it's got information about devil's pool so Joby I grouped together so day five to six it has only one little block and again my different activities on my includes are listed Okay. so my map has got my route that I filled in so you can see there was my little self-drive route that I edited and then it has got all of the information up here as well 
so it has my transfers loaded. I can also go day by day, which allows me to see where my clients are for, or where I will be for the day. And if there is travel between the two points on that day, it will show. In my transport tab, I've got a list of all of my transport information. Where I load in all of my information, it does display with all of the times as well. So your client would have a complete list of all of their pickup and drop off times. Under information, we have got all of the country information for all of the countries that they are in. So we've got South Africa, Zambia and Botswana and the list would go on depending on how many countries you have included in your itinerary. Under documents, this is the list of documents that I uploaded and if they click on it, it will open the document and give you the option to download that. Under the about us, this is information about the consultant and the company and you can fill in those details in your admin section or in your personal details section. And then the print button is the one with the cover document and as I uploaded a cover document, if I click on here, it's going to want to download that document onto my computer. So that is my itinerary. If I save and exit this one and go into my personal itineraries list, you'll see this is a browser and if I click on my itinerary, I have the option to preview and get the printable directly from the browser page. I can also post an itinerary and this is posting an itinerary to someone else who also has a where to account. So you would be able to post it to their account and they can open it on their account. You can also copy itineraries. So remember that you can copy something if you have one client that absolutely loved a trip and you would like it to keep it as a sample. You can also copy it as a sample itinerary and you can use all of those separately. With our itineraries, what we can do is disable itineraries. So you'll see that this is grayed out now and if I copy this link and try and open the itinerary, it is going to say to me that I am not able to view it and I need to contact your travel agent. What I can also do is lock itineraries. So what this does is anyone without admin rights will not be able to open anyone else's locked itineraries. If you have admin rights, you are able to open other people's locked itineraries. But what it also does is what I use it for mostly is if I click edit and I want to edit it, it's just going to remind me that it's locked. And then I will try and remember why I locked it and why I can't change it. So let's unlock that. Then we also have got our URL available here for our clients if you want to copy that and send it to your clients and for the enterprise clients the mobile code will be visible here as well. If you click on your itinerary history we'll see all of the modifications that have been made on the itinerary. So I've only just created this one so there's not very much and you can see that username one which is what I'm logged in as they were the one that made the changes. If I click on a previous version, I can create a copy or I can revert the itinerary. So reverting the itinerary will erase everything you have changed after that and go back to that point. So I always suggest that you create a copy and just rename it. It will rename it with a version. You can see it's got the time and date and you would be able to rework on that and it would be safe that you have this as a reference. So I just want to go back into my itinerary and go through some of the other documents. So we have also launched new vouchers. So with our vouchers you're able to choose a color and you can choose from our list of fonts and then you can also sort by date or by type. So you can choose your date so you can choose which activities you want. So if I don't actually need activities for those, I can 
untick them and then download my vouchers. So if I save that, and there is my vouchers. So it's got the green border, which is the color I selected in the field that dropped picked up. I've got my logo and then my consultant's information. It will also have the reference number, the client names and all of the details about the service. So if you haven't loaded in reference numbers and all of that, there's a reference. You will not have that in here, but whatever you have loaded will pull through. What you can do as well is once the clients have confirmed, we can go in and upload my vouchers and they no longer need a booking form so I can hide that from their view. What I can also do is print a summary. So in this summary, you can choose what you would like to display and I can download my summary. So this is very similar to the principal itinerary except instead of all of the descriptions of the properties and activities and all of that, that won't display. It is a shortened version of the itinerary. So we've got one beautiful image at the top and then we go down into our daily information. So my notes have pulled through as well as contact numbers and information and reference numbers. And then there's a list of service providers at the end. We also, because we had a self-drive portion, we have our print directions. And this is a list of the directions within the itinerary. So we only have one, so it'll be a shorter list, but it will be according to what is on your itinerary. In the beginning as well, it will have the distance, the time traveled and the GPS coordinates of the place you are heading to. Then what we have got is our pricing sheets and I find most people make use of the net sheet. So you can choose your currency. Certain of these currencies Another can currency. add so you can get your conversion. But it won't actually on this sheet convert the rate. It just has it at the top. So on our pricing sheet, what we have the functionality to do is add in when you enable editing, add in your per person per night price and it will add it all together for the number of nights. I can also add in my markup and then you can put in all of your other costings. So here are the miscellaneous fees that I added. So if there were park fees, I could say that I put in the park fees and the entrance fees for activities and breakfast. Again, can mark that up. And my total is coming over here. And then this is the amount I marked it up. So I spent that much, I sold it for that much, and that was my markup. So that one you probably don't want to send to the client, but it will save on your computer and they won't have access to that. So they're not able to see it unless you actually forward it to them. So that is a, a, a private one. Then we have our email client link. So what we have is the functionality to email this itinerary to your client directly from where to. So you can put in your client's email address at the top. You can choose which company email, if you want to choose from your company email or your consultant email. You can change the subject line of your itinerary. You can personalize your message. And I always say, please take this and send yourself a copy of the email so that you have a record of it being sent. It's not going to be in your outbox um, because it's being sent from where to. What you can do is also choose your template. So we have three different email templates. We have our standard email template. We have one that heroes one image. And then we have ones with images and information down the sides. So all of the information, the trip summary, 
and the images will pull through from your specific itinerary and you'll be able to put in an email address and hit send and that will go through to your client. It will say that it is from your company powered by where to. So the last thing that we have is our view notification and this is normally by default to always and what that means is every time that a client clicks on this link you'll get an email saying that someone clicked on that link. So if you have got this in multiple places you can change this to off and you won't get those emails or else you can say per first view only or first view per client. So that is my itinerary the basics of the itinerary builder. Are there any questions that I can answer? Anyone have anything that they would like to ask? Okay, so I have a question that's come through um, and it says, if there's a schedule change on a flight, will where to reflect the new flight times? So unfortunately we don't have the possibility to for live updates at the moment in your route builder what you would have to do is just come down and hit get flights again and it will update the details. So you won't get a notification of that, but you can update it quite quickly. Can you send the pricing to the client in error? No. So the only way that you would be able to send the pricing is if you physically upload it onto step six or if you attach it to an email. There's no way they don't have the option to see any of these buttons um, and there's no way that you can quickly send it to anything. So you actually have to click it and upload it from your computer. So uh, someone says, I see that I have a spell check facility. So I actually make use of a program called Grammarly. You'll see if I click on here, it is Grammarly. And you can get a free account and I live off of Grammarly because I have terrible spelling. So it is a really awesome program and you can go onto their website. We'll pull through then to where to as well. The landing page gallery pictures someone has request asked if they need to be in landscape. So it is always better in landscape because of the size of your screen. We can try and upload one. Let's see if I've got an image. Just gonna upload our sales manager doing some DIY in the office and I'll show you. It might actually crop it. Let's see. So what it has if you've uploaded a portrait, it crops it into a landscape. There are no more questions. That is what I have on offer for you. If you do have it, thank you everyone.